Good morning everybody. Thank you for tuning in to today's video. Uh, this morning it is the Monday after Thanksgiving and typically the Monday after Thanksgiving is relatively busy uh, because what we have done over the weekend is if it's going out of town, uh, we typically bring the uh, load here. So let's say like an RV needs to go out of town. For one, we have to wait till today to even order an overheight permit uh, and two, it's just the traffic over the weekend is ridiculous. So we either throw out a high price because you know we're gonna be sitting in traffic for probably two to three hours more than if we were to just go uh, on a non-holiday weekend, or we uh, offer to bring the unit back to our yard and stage it for Monday, today, and then uh, we will take it out the next day. So with that being said, this morning's pretty busy. Everyone's out, uh, light duty, heavy duty, medium duty, everyone's out doing their thing. I was out late last night uh, towing a truck down to El Centro. So I came in about an hour late because I got home last night at like three in the morning. So now this morning, we're gonna get caught up with some of our local accounts that we have to uh, handle. We do have a John Deere tractor this morning that we have to go pick up and take back to the dealer for some uh, repairs. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I got the Kenworth fired up and uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab that. It's here local, probably about five, six miles south of us. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab that. I believe it's a 6120M. And yeah, we'll get it loaded up and take it back to the dealer. So thanks for tuning in guys and uh, we'll see what the day has in store for us. So let's get to work. I always know Tommy's been in this truck when I get in and my knees are hitting the steering wheel. The steering wheel is basically sitting in my lap and uh, my knees are touching the, uh, the dash there. Tommy's a little short. We make fun of him for it. It's okay. He still kicks ass. He's awesome. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and release our uh, parking brake and we'll go ahead and turn that down. Go ahead and put her in gear. If you guys haven't noticed, I usually run with my running lights on during the day uh, and obviously headlights during the night with the running lights, but I like headlights or uh, running lights during the day. Just, I think it makes the trucks look good and just a little bit of extra visibility. So let's go ahead and uh, pull out the gate here. I'm gonna go ahead and radio to base to open the gate. Can you open the gate, please. And we'll go ahead and mark ourselves in route on tow books and find this John Deere. All right, y'all, we just got here. I already got the uh, PTO on, brake is set, trailer brake is released though, so we can use the Lando, and we're just gonna go ahead and idle it up a bit, get all the hydraulics moving a little bit quicker. That looks good. We'll go ahead and hop out here, grab the remote. I always, I always like to put my gloves right there because that's where I'm gonna need them when I grab chains. Go ahead and uh, tilt up here. Run the axles forward. All right, here come the axles. This is, the, if you guys didn't know, this is run by a uh, two-stage hydraulic ram, one that pulls it and then one that pushes it. All right, so now that we got the uh, deck all down, we're going to go ahead and walk in. I have been to this yard before, so I kind of know that this yard's tight. You probably don't want to get a, a truck and trailer into here, but just when in doubt, you always, I, in my personal preference is to park out on the main road and walk in. That way you don't get yourself into predicament. So let's go ahead and find this tractor. So these guys just finished their date harvest, I think like a m little less than a month ago. So typically when the harvests end, they send their tractors in for whatever repairs they need to do or they have a like a promise program where if you buy a new tractor a year later they come in and inspect it so that's probably what this is because it runs and everything all right so we're looking for a 6120m which this is uh ending in 66011 uh, not that one is that it yeah 66011 that's our tractor so i always get a picture of the serial number just to just to verify that that is you know just for our documentation basically proving we didn't take the wrong tractor all right so we just got another John Deere tractor to pick up once we drop this one off so we're gonna drop this one off 
at the dealer, pick one up from the dealer, take it back out with the customer, and then we have a roller to pick up as well. So as you can see, we are plaza towing, but we do a lot of equipment. Actually, matter of fact, we don't have like a single, I think we got one like heavy duty tow truck up running right now. The rest are just all equipment and RVs which are on our trailers. Cool, I already got the key in there for me. I always carry my keys. These are my keys. Carry the most common uh, brands that we haul and then uh, I have a master set in my backpack. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start up. So we'll go clutch in, foot on the brake. Here's a uh, big one, check that out. See how that's got differential braking? That is helpful in the field, but not when I'm trying to load up the tractor and I come to a stop and I accidentally hit just one side. That's a really quick way to uh, fall off the trailer. So we'll go ahead and lock that up. It only takes you once to remember that because we've all done it. If you've hauled equipment for long enough, uh, we've been down that road, so. All right, so we're in the tractor. We got, it's pretty standard. Uh, you guys see me load this to, you know, this model before. I uh, don't know what this transmission style is called, but I do know that you do not need a clutch to get going. You could uh, simply have your foot on the brake and put it into gear while in neutral and then put it in forward. And once you release the brake, it should move. All tractors pretty much have a range of gears, A, B, C, D, E, F in this case. And then within each of those gears, you have like a, a button here that you can increase your gear. So here you can see if I go F1, uh, it should do it. Uh, oh, there it goes. Eh, it doesn't want to. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm hitting the wrong button. Let's see. There we go. Okay, I was hitting the wrong button. So this button right here is basically gear up and then you can gear down. So as you can see, F1, F2, F3. So get going pretty good. These uh, tractors are, I don't know if they're custom or it's a John Deere option, but they have these cages right here that kind of ramps the palm fronds of these dates up and over the cab so it's not smacking the side of the cab all day and uh, protects the, the operator as well. I don't know if you guys heard what the uh, customer was saying, but I guess it's got a, it's going in for the inspection as I told you. So probably you know the tractor is less than a year old and it's going in for its year inspection and then it does have a uh, slight oil leak I guess in the front hub up here that they're gonna take a look at right, we're going over over swing and then bring it around that way we got the uh, back tires all lined up and so with John Deere's and most tractors but John Deere specifically you got this nice hood emblem right down the middle line that up with your center rail and you're pretty good so what I like to do when I'm loading equipment is put it in the lowest gear for highest amount of torque. You gotta put it in neutral. All right, let's go A, and then we'll go, I'm gonna show you guys this too. So let's put it in one, and then I got just my foot on the brake. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in forward, and then we start moving. I like to put it in the lowest gear, that way I'm not fighting with the clutch to keep it from rolling back. It just has a lot of torque and you climb the bed. What I also can do is compare the inner uh, sidewall of the tire from side to side and kind of get a baseline of where I'm at on the trailer. So I can see I got about half of the inner board there and then I got a little more than half. So I'll go to the left and go right about there. That looks pretty good. Alright, go ahead and set the brake or clutch and brake at the same time, neutral, and then we'll take it into park. Clutch out, release the brake, it holds. Turn it off, raise the steering wheel. Alright, let's go get four chains and uh, chain this thing down really quick and let's go. Gotta check your chains, guys. Good example. The chain came undone while I was uh, chaining it down, so it started to undo itself. That's better.
All right, we'll show you guys what we got going on here. So we got two chains going to the front steer axle. Now, something important to look at on all tractors, sometimes they run uh, wiring or uh, you know some sort of electric line behind the brake, uh, behind the axle. So you always want to make sure that you, when you feed the chain over the axle, that you're not pinching one of those. In this case, there is none. And then back here, we have one uh, 20 foot chain split into two. And then, you know, this is a dead leg, so we're not using the same chain. Perfectly legal. And then same thing up here. We just got the one chain going to the front. So let's go ahead and level it out. Hope you guys enjoyed that little time lapse. The camera kept falling and I kind of scared me for a second. I thought we lost the camera. So got it in gear, set the brake, keep the uh, red in, PTO out of gear, PTO's on, and then we'll idle it up a bit. And I think for uh, the offload, I'm just gonna set up the camera and do a quick little time lapse and we'll get it off and then we'll get the next one on and go. So let's do it. I'm just gonna put all the chains in the middle since we're loading up another tractor. I'm just gonna put them all in the middle and that way we can drive the next tractor up and over the chains and then rechain. All right, we still got one chain on it. Maybe this won't be a time lapse, I don't know. Seems we're, we're offloading pretty quick, so. Got my remote here on the my belt. Alright, and touchdown. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. I'm just keeping the tires straight. I've learned over time that um, you get yourself into a predicament when you try to overcorrect. All right, I'm just gonna park this tractor here. We'll go ahead and check in with the uh, staff here and see what the deal is with our tractor. Looks like it might have a flat tire, probably from over the weekend. So I'll we'll probably just have the shop air it up really quick. All right, here is our next tractor. This one's kind of messy. Ooh. Break is locked. This little tractor is a little baby tractor. Honestly, I probably wouldn't even use four chains on this thing local. I'm sure it weighs less than 10,000 pounds, so. I guess technically you probably don't even need four chains to go across the scales either. But I don't know, we'll see. Sometimes these small tractors, it's like impossible to put four chains on them. They just don't put very uh, usable chain down slots. Tommy's 
set of keys or Roberto's. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure this is one of my guys' set of keys. So I'm gonna send them a picture, make sure if not, then I'll give it back to the RDO guys. Someone, someone's gonna be looking for these. All right, two chains on the front, two chains on the back. We're good to go. It's a little bit hot today. All things considering it is not hot, but for what it has been lately, it's kind of hot today. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take this. We're gonna go down to thermal with this one. And then uh, on the way back in, we have a roller to pick up. So let's do it. Uh, I just got confirmation back from uh, Tommy that those were his keys, so. Tell me lunch for those ones. guys we got that tractor dropped off here now we're just gonna go right down the street here to grab a uh, Volvo roller and deliver that to another job site that they're gonna be working on so let's go ahead and go grab that roller it's just down the street here inside the uh, what's called the thermal club it's uh, basically a millionaire's paradise racetrack and giant houses and it's like a clubhouse like golf course it's like a golf course but with race cars pretty cool so let's go ahead and head over there and uh, we'll see what we can find so these are all open lots right here for where they're gonna uh, basically you come and buy the lot and then you put up a giant house with a giant garage and you overlook the uh, racetrack which is on the other side of that wall. I'll show you guys the house when we come up to it. Right now it's just all empty lots. This half is undeveloped, the other half is developed. you guys saw but that first house had like tires and a lift and like a full shop in that garage like there's some big money here millionaire's playground pretty awesome all the race trailers ferrari is up here i guess right now so this is a little subdivision of the thermal club that we're at this is the bmw performance driving school i've done this before this is so cool basically get to race all the BMWs around this little mini track here. It's really awesome. And they have a uh, driver who, a professional driver on the radio that kind of coaches you as you drive, but you are completely in control. You can drive as fast as you want. Look at that guy, he's hauling ass. Uh, look at all, these are all the BMWs over here. I've done it, it's such an awesome experience. This is a, a slick pad where you can practice like maintaining control under adverse conditions. Nice. Crazy. All right, here's our roller. Let's see what it's all about. All right. Go ahead and uh, go through my bunch of keys here. Should be this one. I thought. There it goes. I think. No, not that. Hmm. Okay, I need to go grab uh, my big set of keys. My, actually, you know what? 
since I have uh, Tommy's keys from the last one, I'm sure he has, I believe it's this one. I think it's a slightly different cut than, I just did a, re, a redo on my uh, key ring. Yeah, it's a totally different cut. I thought that this key was the same as this one, but it's not. This is the key I wanted. It's, see how it's like a narrower cut? I believe it's this one. So that kind of worked out that I had Tommy's keys on me, but this is the key I believe I need. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, here we go. Yep, there it is. That's the one I wanted. Oh, ha, ha. Dead. <sighs> okay, well, at least I have a jump starter. So I started carrying this uh, Noco battery, I think it's the GB150 jump pack. Yeah, pull it out over here. Yeah, the GB150. I've been carrying this, no sponsorship at all. I bought this with my own money. This thing is a beast, a tank. I mean, you pay the price. I think it's like 400 bucks, but uh, this thing lasts forever and it literally will start like equipment like this. And like I've jump started the rotator from a dead start before. Um, it's got quite a bit of cranking amps and it, it does the job for sure. So um, I've been carrying this with me religiously now because I've been running into equipment that needs jump starts. And so I just decided to keep this in my backpack from now on. So it paid off on this instance. So hopefully uh, this thing isn't super, super dead. I mean, it made it cranked a little bit. So uh, we'll go ahead and undo this bolt right here. All right, now I'm gonna have to uh, figure this out. Uh, they're not wired for a 24 volt, which is good. So we should just be able to grab a positive post and a negative post. These batteries are from uh, 19, so coming up on almost two years old. Okay, so I got positive and negative. You can see here, it's telling me 11.9 volts. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. Okay, it's doing its thing. I'm just going to kind of stow that right there. All right, so that's the setup we got. Oh crap, now I got to get up here. All right. Hang on. Ugh, I folded the step down so I can't really get it. Let's just try to start it right here. picture 
just lining up that post with the center rail of the deck. I can't really see anything else other than that. So that's my really only reference point. And I'm gonna take it up a little bit further, take it there. Okay, we'll go neutral. And then we'll, we're gonna slowly roll back a little bit, hit the parking brake, that's in park. I'm gonna leave it running, so that way when we get there, it at least has a little bit of charge, and then I'll shut it off and hand it over to the operators over there, and hopefully it'll start back up for them. Just a little detour here. That's loud. Apologize. There's the guys going around the uh, slick track. Look at that guy getting sideways. Basically what they're doing right there is, uh, if I remember correctly, they have the one car starts on one side, the other car starts on the other side, and they have three laps uh, to see who compete, who finishes first. So you're basically, you're trying to keep a pace and uh, stay in front of the car behind you, but you're also trying not to spin out, because if you spin out, you lose, obviously. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool he's like in just a constant drift when when i did it uh my instructor was a formula drift uh champion so that might be him in the car right there doing his thing kind of showing off because at the end of like the whole thing they take uh take you in the car with the professional driver and i mean you would not believe how you think you're fast which me it not to brag but me and my brother actually set the uh top times of the day by quite a bit like we were racing we were the youngest you know at the time it was for my 21st birthday and my brother was 17 and at the time like we were competing against drivers well older than us um, and we smoked them my brother actually beat me by like a tenth of a second which a win's a win but I'm still salty so uh, yeah that's pretty cool pretty cool experience if you guys ever have the opportunity to do that definitely suggest it all right, well, we got to deliver this roller to a new job site, so let's go ahead and do that. guys we got the roller drop now we're going to go to the loves truck stop and pick up a 38 foot rv uh, i guess it lost its turbo but will run so i'm probably not going to film much of that maybe just a few time lapses here and there rv customers really don't like to be filmed i've found out so uh we're going to go ahead and head over there see what we got and i'll get a few little clips of that but that is what we're going to do next all right guys I, like i said i didn't have any chance to get any footage of that one but uh we're here in front of one of our good uh shops that we bring a lot of stuff to mobile lube express that right there is the rv that i brought in it actually worked out really well i was surprised um it was one of those like few cases where it went up the land all without having to put any blocks down to ramp up the back end so that it didn't drag it drove right on i was Thoroughly impressed and happy because I was, uh, I think, let's see, I got the call. Mm, I so I was on scene at 1:08 p.m. and it is now 1:40 p.m. and I am clear. So that's pretty good. Uh, less than 30 minutes of work from 
the time I got there to the time I am clear for an RV. Uh, and I had to go, you know, eight, nine miles down the road. So that's pretty good, if I do say so myself. So, uh, day is coming to an end and slowly. It's two o'clock now, so I guess there's two more hours of, I guess, work left. Not necessarily, I mean, you know how the towing industry is. You could be out until midnight tonight, but in a perfect world, we got two more hours left in the day before we can hopefully go home for the day and hopefully stay home. Uh, but we'll see, you never know. So we're gonna head back to the yard now. We are clear at this point and uh, we'll probably go back to the yard and maybe catch up, some, catch up on some paperwork and things that I need to do in the office um, that need my attention. So let's go ahead and uh, head back to the yard. So I just got off the phone with Tommy and uh, I, we were talking on the phone and he was under the assumption that I'd see him at the yard. So I said, oh, okay, I'll see you in a second. Little does he know that I am right down the street from him. So we're gonna go surprise him and see what he's up to. He is moving a water truck from, uh, he picked it up in Ontario and he's bringing it back here. I know. I know it. Now those were your intentions? Yes. The simple things in life, Tommy. We all know you can't back up on camera. I told you I'd see you in a second. Wait, wait. All right, time to mess with Tommy a little bit here. Let's grab those keys of his. What? Ay! Cabron! Hydraulic leak somewhere. I'll have them. We'll get them fueled up and I'll have them turn it on and see. But I think it's that line right there. Yeah, we can go wash it. Looking for something? Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh, not so fast. <laughs> you know they were mine. You knew they were mine. It's like mine. a little cheese in a trap. <laughs> you know they were mine. Well, I saw them and I was like, I know that's one of your guys. This is a. I got two two bunches, right? I got the one I mainly use that's on my bag and then I got this extra one. But this one got every little key you need, you know, the little. It actually came in handy because I had that in my pocket, yeah. right? And I mistakenly, let's see. I mistakenly put this key on my key ring thinking it was the one for the roller, but it just gifted a little bit different cut. Mm -hmm. And so I was about to go back, walk all the way back to the truck to grab my so big, big set. And I was like, oh, I have the magic I have the magic keys. <laughs> All right, guys, so we are here in the wash bay. As you guys saw, we got a little bit of a hydraulic leak here, and I suspect that it is because um, every once in a while when you disconnect these trailers, if you um, don't fully move all these valves, and even sometimes if you do, which in that case we did, we moved all the valves before we dropped the trailer, and then when we came back and reconnected the trailer, the lines are under pressure, so you're not able to reconnect them. So when that happens, you crack the line and relieve pressure, and then you can plug in your lines. Well, I suspect that we didn't tighten it down fully, and that's what caused this little leak. So we got it tightened down now, and we're gonna pressure wash it, as well as the whole truck, and then clean it free of any of that oil, and then we'll turn on the PTO and see if we can see any more leaks. <laughs> Woo! Shit! 
Shaving cream, buddy. Alright guys, that is going to conclude the day. I think it was a pretty successful day. We all went pretty good, pretty hard today. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you did enjoy that and hopefully you guys are enjoying this style of video. Um, to, to date with this, the filming of this video, uh, I have not posted this style of video. We're so, I wouldn't say backed up on videos, but we have a good stockpile of videos that we're working through and typically i try to stay in order so um, we have a few videos prior to uh when we switch to like this style so hopefully you guys are liking it i know if you guys are keeping up with the videos to date when this is posted you guys probably have heard me say that probably four or five times now but hopefully you guys are liking this style uh please let me know in the comments if you are or if you aren't any suggestions are much appreciated so with that being said, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.